Hello and welcome to the Parents of Advocate podcast from surviving to thriving in your household. My name is Gene Schwelin. Next to me, as always, my beautiful bride, Dr. Sonia Schwelin, pediatric psychologist expert and also nationally certified school psychologist. Today, we're going to kick the summer off with an episode about family activities we can do at home with our kids all summer long. Vacations, activities, things that we really need to really focus on for our kids. And I've got some great ideas. I know you've been doing a lot of research on your own for our own family. So I'm going to pick your brain and find out what you've seen out there and give some parents some really good tips of what to do to stay active for our kids and our families, building some great bonding time for the summer. So you said we were going to talk about activities that you can do at home. And then the first thing you said was vacations. <laughs> Activities you can do at home, vacations. Got it. That can include staycations. Right, we're separating we're going to talk out. about money, okay. I just want things to make that are sure. free, things we can do for our family. It, it's really all about summertime. Kids get so excited for the summertime. They think about having the summer off. They expect parents to be off too. And that's not really what happens, obviously. Um, but we're going to talk about ways we can actually bond even more this summer with our kids. Um, whether it's going on vacation, sitting at home, or all of the above. Okay, let's do it. All right. So um, one thing that we talked about uh, in a previous episode for parents was the morning routine. And there were some very important things we talked about. Um, that's really great to really just build um, a, a mental strength, physical strength, spiritual strength, and whatnot. So I think some of those things we can talk about. One of the things that we talked about was reading. And uh, so this summer, when it's really hot outside and we need to take a break from the sun, or if it's raining outside like it has been here the last few days here where we live, the library is a very good option. It's free um, for the most part. There may be a membership uh, where you live at. There may not be. If you don't return books like we don't sometimes, you've got to pay <laughs> a book fee. Um, but uh, in any event, the library is a really great option. Tell us why. All right. So all kids, all ages love the library. Um, I take the eight, our eight year old, our three and our, you know, almost two year old there and they all find something to do. They're very, very entertained by the children's section. There's usually at most libraries, there is like a whole section where kids can run around, play and make noise, even though it's a library um, and get away with it because it's it's designated for that with that understanding that kids can't always be super quiet um, they love just pulling books off the shelf and they love bringing books home. But usually a library trip when we go takes about an hour or more because we spend time there. We don't just go get some books, check out and leave. We go, we pick out our books, then we go to the section where they can be loud and, and run around and stuff. And they play with the games, um, the educational things. They pick up books. They sit in my lap. They'll ask me to read to them. Sometimes they go off alone and they'll read by themselves. It's really cool. It's a nice way to, to spend uh, a good chunk of time on a rainy day. Uh, and they enjoy it. It's, it's an outing. They get to go somewhere. But it also lets them appreciate just going to the library and, and getting their hands in books and it's really cool to watch a kid kind of explore books. Um, they get excited. They turn the pages. They get interested in the stories. And even little kids, you know, if you read to them often enough, they start to memorize the books that you read to them. Absolutely. And we've seen that with our kids. I've got books that I read to, to our kids and um, they read them to me in the car now. Yeah. They know like because of the picture on the page, what the words say, because they've heard you say it enough. Yeah, you know, and there's one thing that's also really important about the library that's really cool is that kids can be independent there, too. Like, mm -hmm. they will get into their own world, all the different books and whatnot. That's why we have these book fees for not returning books, because we get so many books that we bring home. Uh, but the library has a lot more to offer, even at, you know, even more than that. There's a lot of libraries that are just uh, um, great for even, like, exploring different types of things. Like, there's one library that we've been to that has a 3D printer and these different types of things you can experience that you don't get just anywhere uh, and then a lot of libraries especially for those who are uh, for kids who are like in grade school elementary school and whatnot they have a lot of uh, uh, book reading contests and clubs and whatnot over the summer that helps them earn prizes the prizes are really silly and whatnot for you know when we look at it but the kids love it and it really just it, it, it motivates them to read um, and when kids go to libraries you just see their minds just 
open up and it allows them to dream and, and experience things and you know in a world that is so uh just inundated with with social media and tvs and screens and everything else the library is a great escape it is and they also generally have structured um schedules at the library so different days of the week usually on the weekends too they'll have activities or crafts or some kind of you know just group yeah, you guys thing. played you guys played hockey in the parking lot the other day we, right we played um miniature golf in miniature the parking golf, lot there you go. yeah uh, the library hosted that because of the byron nelson competition that's right the um, golf tournament yeah and so because that was in town they had at the library everything like golf themed and they even had like post uh trophies and just memorabilia from post um tournaments or prior tournaments and um and the kids got to learn and they got to pick up a golf club and and they had a little fun it was really cool yeah absolutely so reading is very important uh for all of us and if we can instill that in our kids at a very young age it, it will make huge a huge difference in their life moving forward i know as a kid i didn't really go to the library that much and i never got really um into reading that that much until later later on and even now sometimes it's hard for me to sit down with a book and i, I really hate that i really work try i really try to you know I, I really work hard to try to to read more and it's still for me it's a struggle because i didn't have that as a kid so it's so important for us to have that with our kids it is one of my most favorite memories of my mom was literally us sitting on the couch together and finishing books like in one day she would read hers and i would read mine we wouldn't even say anything to each other, but just the fact that we were next to each other reading a book. And they would just hand them over and swap them out. Here you go. Not say a <laughs> word, you know, shoulder to shoulder like we talked about as, as those guys read do. read a book in a day. It was cool. All right. So we've got reading. So some other activities that we really want to kind of focus on that's really going to be healthy for our kids, but even for us, um, is, is really being outside in the outdoors and doing some physical activity. Um, kids... They need stimulation. They need physical activity. They need to go out there and run around. It is crucial for the development in so many ways, just like reading is. Um, so there's all types of things we can do outside, even in our own backyard. So at the house, there's all kinds of things to do. There's parks. There's splash pads. Um, there's hiking trails in most places. Anywhere that you can go to really these days, there's going to be hiking trails, biking trails, so much to take advantage of. There's probably more things in your actual city that you could ever imagine that you don't even know exists. We find new things on a weekly, monthly basis just here where we live, and we've been here for years. No, absolutely. And I, getting outside is, is detri it's just so critical to a child's development, fresh air, sunshine, um, and just exploration. And, you know, in your own backyard, you can, you know, if you have – a ball you can play some ball game you can make up games with kids you can kids love bubbles at all play. ages right bubbles are you can really make good your idea. own bubbles yeah. which is really cool you get strings i saw dad that the uh park we were at not too long ago he had the two sticks with the string and a big bucket of bubbles that he made to look like and, and they were humongous humongous <laughs> bubbles and, and you had kids of all ages from from itty bitty to like teenagers and out even there me i was all about it chasing those bubbles <laughs> and they had so a band cool. playing and the band even said hey man look at that guy he's still in all of our attention because he's got these bubbles over here i know it's so cool i want some of that at our house you can do sidewalk chalk you can um jump on a trampoline you can go for walks one of the things I like to do with the toddlers and our eight-year-old is um, a scavenger hunt. And I just kind of stand there and I tell them to go look for things. And then they come back with all variations of whatever I've asked for. So I'll ask for maybe a leaf that's shaped like a heart or a white rock, but without jagged edges, it needs to be smooth. And so I just make sure that like whatever I'm asking for will take a little bit of time. And then they are very busy searching for it. So if you want your own time outside with the kids that you don't usually get, there you go. Scavenger yeah. hunts and make it fun. You know, another thing that we talked about, even for parents in our morning routine, is the physical activity that we need sometimes and getting up extra early to get our workout on and whatnot. One thing that we have found to be very effective, especially on the weekends, when we may not want to do our workout first in the morning, we actually incorporate the park and whatnot um, as part of our workout, which is great for the kids. So, like, we make it to the park. Before we go to the park, we take two laps around the lake. So we get our walking in. Um, Kids will ride scooters, sit in the stroller, whatever it may be. They may ride bikes or whatever else. Um, and then at the park, we're extremely active with our kids, too. So we're engaging with them. I remember just just last weekend at the park, 
there was a, a younger kid and he had very little engagement by the, you know, the person that was supervising him. And I, we were, I felt so bad for him. It's like, you know, we're have, over here having so much fun with our kids, playing hide and seek and running around and racing on the slides. And, you know, it's a workout for us, but it's also great for our kids. And I just, I don't understand that. Like we see it so often with parents um, at different places and parks where they're not really engaging. They're just sitting back and sitting on the bench watching and they're on their phones and, or they just stand there, and I mean, I I, I even saw that this morning. Honestly, I, I took three the the three younger kids. I we went out for a walk. We we did a three mile walk, but it was like a nature trail. So the kids didn't really they couldn't tell how long it was. They, they got their, filthy. They had their scooters. We were in the mud in puddles. I got to run, and um, when it was time to actually go to the playground, I kept going. Like I was, I didn't do my workout this morning, right? So I was pushing the baby on the swing. And between pushes, I was doing a couple jumping jacks. And then after I got her off of the swing, I was climbing up the slides with them. And like you said, I was trying to do some pull-ups on one of the monkey bars. Like we do pull-ups <laughs> on the monkey bars, on the swings. It was really funny. I couldn't do it. Um, you, know, we, I, we, you know, I do American Ninja stuff, so I'm like flipping mm-hmm. off the top of the swing set and whatnot. And constantly and moving around with them. And they love it because it's fun and it keeps us engaged with them. And then I saw another parent out there with her kid. And she was just standing there in front of her child while she was swinging her. And I, it made me think of you, like whenever we swing the kids, you'll get in front of them and you pretend like their little feet are kicking you and you kind of run off and then go, ah, don't get me, right, when they are yeah, swinging in front of you. I do the matrix. I like push them from behind <coughs> and run up underneath really them. Funny. I mean, we do a lot of fun things. Like mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll poke them and prod them and tickle them and whatnot while they're swinging. You know, it's really important. There, there is a time for kids to have their own independent playtime, and that's important also. Uh, but when you're at the park, it's really important to really spend time with your kids, engaging with them. That There's a lot of research, especially when it comes to, to dads, but even with moms, like that physical activity uh, with your parent is so important to development, to the development as well, um, that you've got to have that. And there's no better place to do that in the park. I mean, we, we, you know, hide and seek the things that we do. I mean, it's so much fun. The kids get so much out of it. And then when they get home, parents, just so you know, when they get home, they are worn out. They go to bed. They're good yeah, for the they're night. They're wiped. You know, and, <laughs> but I've seen it where we don't engage with the kids, and then they come home, and they're not wiped out whatsoever. Right. Um, and, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's research. It's, it's actually like in the filial therapy world. <clears throat> Sorry. There, it's parent-child interaction therapy. And the research shows that the, you know, the moment we stop laughing and the moment we stop playing, that's actually – the beginning of like the dying process, especially in relationships. And so if we're not, you know, being intentional about going out of our way to include playfulness and laughter and joking and those kinds of things with our children or with our spouse or just with anyone that we're in a relationship with, the relationship becomes dry, old, heavy, it's a burden and it's not fun, it's not, it's not healthy anymore. So, you know, when I see parents like that at the park, sometimes they're just kind of on their phone, they're walking around, they're not interested, they're pushing their kid, but they're not really talking to their kid even on the swings or whatever. I do start to think about that, like, oh man, like what's happening here? You know, they're not even playing with their child anymore. Yeah, well, and even um, there's times at the playground to where I've, I'll even see that when I'm going up to the steps and going up to the slides and different things that we're doing. And there's all these other kids there, and their parents are around watching them. Some of these kids, even even as two, three years old, but even like oh, as old as like 10, 12, 13 years old, are so rude and so ugly. They don't have any manners. They cut in line. They're fighting with each other. They don't even know each other. And there's no parental guidance. So I think that's also a great, and that's that's I've used some of those moments as great moments for just teaching our kids, like, you know, just let somebody just let them be and, and just be patient. Um, let's be polite and let's, you know, take our turn and whatnot. So there's so much education that can go into that too. There is. I mean, I, I always say like every opportunity is an opportunity to parent. We're never able to just like turn off, right? We're always on as parents and joining children in their play and not all the time, because like what you said, independent play is really important skill to, for, you know, lifelong confidence and security and emotional regulation but joining them on a regular basis, at least intentionally once a week at the minimum, is so important for helping them learn those life skills, appropriate social responses, and how to handle themselves in those circumstances. Yeah. 
and one thing that I'll, I'll kind of I'll end with this when it comes to the parks and whatnot. But parks today are like unlike anything we ever knew as kids. I mean, the parks that we had back in the day are not like they have now. Every park has climbing walls and these features and these ropes, and these are great opportunities too to really allow our kids to like you know do things with us being there, having that 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 support that they need, that security. But to like even overcome their fears in certain ways and, and excel and, and grow, it's, it's so awesome. And we've got, you know, our, our three-year-old clump up to these top of these ropes and whatnot because daddy does it now, his eight-year-old sister does it. And it's so awesome to watch and just watch them overcome these fears is great development at the same time. Yeah, and, you know, even our two-year-old's doing that now. She says, I do it, I do it. And I just kind of spot her from behind as she's climbing, but she's getting stronger. She's more independent and much more confident just with a little practice on the uh, on the ladders at these playgrounds. I'm right, I'm right there behind her, right? Sure. Because I want to make sure she's safe, but I'm not doing it for her, and that's what's really cool about it. Yeah, it, just, it does so much in so many different ways as a kid gets older. Um, so the next thing that I want to kind of jump into is like doing some outdoor activities, but things that, like the zoo, can be so... Even therapeutic. We had an episode a while back about um, equine therapy and using using animals in therapy and the, really the what that does for for just individuals. The I guess some of the there's just the the wow factor of watching these, some of these animals, some of these even bigger animals, or even some of these cats and whatnot that you can see at zoos. I mean, it, it's it's amazing and it's so therapeutic at the same time. No, absolutely. I mean, animals. They're. I mean, they're they're definitely therapeutic. I think there's a connection to animals and it's also just a really cool opportunity for kids to learn about nature and God's creatures and and explore and be in awe of just how much there is out in this world. So it kind of opens their eyes to the fact that there's just more to my life than going to school and going home. There's other things out there to learn about. Yeah. And when I go to a zoo, even at this age, you know, I, um, I look at some of these animals, I'm like, man, that's just, that's just amazing just watching them. And then I think about certain things. I'm like, as amazing as these animals are in their own ways, man, we as human beings are so amazing how complex we are, the things we actually get to accomplish and do. Look at this world that we live in, all the technology and the medical advances and all these things like flying an airplane, all these things we get to uh, really enjoy because we actually created it you know, obviously with the help of the Lord, but it's, it's really phenomenal. So I, when I look at animals, it, you know, and amazed by them, and then I'm like taken back by how advanced we are even above and beyond these animals. It's really pretty cool. I mean, you get all that from the zoo. I'm going to hang out with you more often. Yeah, man. I'm <laughs> fun to hang out with. That's why you married me, right? I guess. All right. So what are some other activities we can do? I know you did a lot of research um, trying to be really creative to reach our 17-year-old. So we've got a 17-year-old, as you all probably know by now, an 8-year-old, 3-year-old, <laughs> almost 2-year-old. Um, so we've got to find different activities to really um, kind of um, entertain all the group. And we can't always do things that are just for the three-year-old and two-year-old because then the 17 year olds disengaged, doesn't want to hang out anymore. Um, so you found some really cool activities. I will say really quick, one also really cool thing, especially in the summer heat, are things like these indoor jump places where you have all these trampolines and whatnot. Um, it, it's in parents, if you go and you actually engage with your kids doing that stuff, man, it's a workout too. It's a lot of fun. Um, you get to jump on, you work your quads and your glutes and everything else, man. It's, it's, it's <laughs> well, good we're stuff. We're talking about today's working out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, we, we enjoy it. We've but been uh, sitting at a desk too long. All right. So what are some other activities you found? Um, so just some tips out there for you parents. Um, with our 17 year old, I mean, I did what I would tell any one of my clients to do, which is just ask him or her what they're interested in doing this summer. And so when I asked him, he said that he wanted to learn archery, which is super cool and interesting for us because if we're going to go do that with him, it's nice to also find some entertainment out of it, right? Um, I definitely <laughs> will be entertained watching you shoot a bow. <laughs> I've done it before. I can, I'll surprise you, I think. So anyways, I looked this up, and uh, surprisingly, there's a ton of places in this part of town that actually offer, you know, basic instruction, beginner's level intro classes, and it's super easy. I mean, the one place I found, it's like, come in on a Saturday. You don't have to make a reservation. Just pay, you know, the entrance fee, and we'll give you all the equipment and do the lesson for you. 
Um, and then you can go every hour on the hour, every day of the week until like 8 p.m. for an intro level lesson. So it's just so accessible. I was like, wow, this is really cool. We're definitely going to do this. Um, for the eight year old, I just know what she's interested in. And so I looked up a bunch of, uh, open gym or gymnastic types of camps. And the cool thing about gymnastics places is that they offer camps every week. You can sign up, you know, you don't have to sign up for the whole summer. Yeah. They have half day, full days, week by week. Right. And they have other activities that are fun outside of gymnastics. So they kind of break the day up. You know, so, <coughs> you know, that's something she can go and do for a little while, but we that's not something we all get to do together with her. So to kind of make up for that, that's why we go to the park or we do the sidewalk chalk or the bubbles or the other things at home. But we're intentional about making those things happen when we're at home. Absolutely. Well, and a lot of us as parents have to work during the week. So these camps are actually great opportunities for kids to do something other than just going and sitting somewhere that's not mm -hmm. going to be as fun. Um, and they can kind of pick and choose. I mean, there's, there's artistic camps. I mean, there's all the different types of camps you can do. In fact, I was speaking to our real estate agent early today and asking him what his kids are up to for the summer. And they're involved in basketball and tennis. And so they're doing all these different camps. It's a great way to expose your kids to different activities, especially at a young age, because his kids are also younger, to really find out some things that they may actually really like and want to pursue more so. And that's one way, to, instead of like getting somebody involved or a kid involved in, in baseball for an entire season, there's camps you can do to really figure out what they may have more uh, something that they may be more, more passionate about. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good experiment, right? And then for the younger kids, the two and the three-year-old, you know, I'm really passionate about them understanding that they are bicultural and, uh, you know, keep them connected to some of their cultural roots. And so um, just helping them learn another language this summer is kind of what my goal is. And I'm going to do that through nursery rhymes in other languages and showing them cartoons and movies. But also I've been doing some research on getting some instruction in the language that I'm interested in teaching them, which is Hindi. And so because of all of that, that's going to be a major focus this summer in the house as well. Yeah, and there's actually great programs called Pimsleur and some other ones that um, you can actually all do as a family that, teach you how to speak a different language little by little, but really in as little as 30 days, you can be speaking pretty decent, uh, you know, language. And they do it by just repeating words back in certain ways with the accent. You repeat it back with the accents. That's really how you're, how kids really learn anyway. So when, when kids have an accent, it's because that's the accent their parents have. Mm -hmm. So if we took our kid that was born, first born and gave it to somebody else for the first two years, they're going to sound like that couple over there or those parents over there and not like us, right? So it's really kind of cool. Yeah, it's environmental. <laughs> Nurture versus nature, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so some other activities, um, some things that we like to do that may be something of interest, but um, kids love the pool. So whether you have a pool, whether you go to a community pool, uh, whether you go to splash pads, kids love to be in the water. It's lots of fun. Water hoses, sprinklers and whatnot, slip and slides, all those things. Kids love those things. It's entertaining, and that's a lot of things that they can actually do by themselves. Uh, our kids make us get wet too, but... Um, it actually feels good, though, when it's kind of hot outside. <laughs> lots of fun. Washing the car. We have lots of fun washing the car with all the kids, but especially when it's outside. Uh, and then kids, they love... Kids love fire. You know, it's really <laughs> exciting. And uh, I know it sounds funny, right? So uh, what I'm thinking of is like bonfires... And something even a little bit more more simplistic is those little th chimneys that you can actually buy for very, very cheap or something like that. You can actually do like a little fire in your backyard sitting around a campfire. And making s'mores. And making s'mores. Kids love s'mores. Yeah. And it's so cool. fun. They'll, and they actually like making them more than like eating them, believe it or not. So yeah. uh, they'll make more than they eat. And it's okay. So mom can eat the rest of them. And, you know, you said washing cars, but I think kids, no matter how old they are, because even our 17-year-old's really into this, it's just like washing anything. So if you give them, like, a project and you say, go outside and wash this, <laughs> use the hose, get some soap on it, they'll be super into it for a little while. Yeah, man. I bring that power washer <laughs> out. It's so funny. And they will they will be out there for hours with the power washer. Yes. I don't know what they're power washing, but they'll power wash <laughs> anything you give them. So whatever it is, man, they love it. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we like to play cornhole, but there's definitely little games you can buy. Badminton. or even make at home. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, our cornhole boards are things that we made mm -hmm. ourselves. In fact, actually, our 17-year-old made it for me for Father's Day last yeah, year. he did. He painted it and everything. Yeah. So. Um, and every uh, most of these activities, except for the library and, like, camps, um, so far have been free. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much to do out there. In fact, if you look up activities, just you can just Google activities in my area. Like, there's... Um, 
uh, things to do around town. There's like a website like that here in McKinney area and whatnot. There's so much to do. Um, and then the last thing that we can end with is really vacations. So I know there's a lot of people trying to, you know, get their vacation in the summer. We couldn't do it last summer with COVID. And we have waited to the very last minute to look at where we would like to go on vacation this year. And what we have found, because we've waited way too long, is that everything has been super, super expensive. Yeah. So we're now we have to literally pay for the time that we wasted. <laughs> Literally, or what we're going to probably do is do like a really cool little road trip and maybe just go see some scenic areas and just take it slow and stop here and there. We've got way too many kids, all different ages, so um, <laughs> it's going to definitely be an adventure, but that's going to be the fun part about it. So, um, you know, for those who, who aren't going somewhere, there's cool things you can do even around town. There's zip line parks everywhere now. There are. Um, there's hiking. There's, I mean, there's so much to do. So just really talk to your kids too. find out some things that they would like to do. Uh, let them have some input. Um, doing some things they like to do is going to be really important because then you can have your own ideas and they're going to be willing to do your ideas if they also have an input and doing some of the things they like to do as well. And then they also won't take it so hard when, you know, you go on a date with your spouse because you're spending all this other time with them that sometimes to see you guys get away is actually good for your kids. Yeah, and if your kids are having to be with away from you a lot during the summertime at camps or at daycare or whatever it may be for you and your family, um, kids will really appreciate the time they have with you. They will, the true interaction, doing different things you can't do all year long. It's summertime. You know, there's a certain vibe that comes out in us in summertime, that barbecue smell, the nostalgic types of things that we think of as kids. And the if sunscreen. we're not, if, <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially me. But if we're not, if we're not doing those things with our kids that, that we have nostalgic like thoughts of, they're not going to ever have those thoughts. So it takes us doing it with our kids to keep that going. Yep. Be intentional. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you for tuning in to the Parents of Advocate podcast. Vacations, summer activities, things to do with your kids, bonding opportunities. We look forward to seeing you next week from surviving to thriving in your household.